Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Where All the Magic Happens. One of the many songs that I have recorded in the past couple of years is a song called Exit 89. It was originally titled Exit 69, but I figured I'd be a bit more classier and call it Exit 89 instead, because 89 sounds a lot more 80s-ish than 69, obviously. This song in particular has gotten, I don't know, somewhat of popularity on the internet, and so I figured I'd show everybody how the song was produced, going under the hood, showing you track by track how I produced it, and um, yeah, it was, it's just a fun little song. I put this song together in like a day. I started out the song with the idea that I wanted it like a synthy, 80s, retro wave type feel, kind of sinister, mysterious. Anyways, enough of me talking. Let's get under the hood and check out how Exit 89 from Kinda Yellow was made. Okay, so since this song was just kind of an instrumental, it's only about a minute and a half long, but within this minute and a half, you can see here, there's a little bit of activity, a little bit of a change up. So I'll just play it from the beginning, show you what it starts out as. so we have that piece right there for eight measurements okay so what is happening is I'm gonna solo this and just show you what this is this is uh, one synthesizer that is panned right this one's panned left but it's virtually the same thing I'll show you so that's all that it is and what is happening here is it's an assimilation pad, and I have some pulverization on it. So since I have it like at this frequency, you know, it's more lo-fi, more 80s, more VHS tape. Turning it up like that, it's more clear. But if you want that 80s sound, you always want to turn the frequency down a bit. And I'm using Reason 7, and that's I use per pulverizer quite a bit for things that I need. What else I have going on besides these two synthesizers is uh, this right here, which we will now listen to isolated. And so as you see right here, I have quite a bit happening with it. I have some delay, some reverb, a pulverizer on it with a lot of dirt on it, and the frequency is basically all the way up, give or take a few things. And it's a, a bass uh, thing that, yeah, has dirt on it, so it sounds that it has that crunchy sound. And then I have this arpeggiator here, and yeah, I have it down an octave, and it goes from up to down. You'll see here. If I turn this off, that's what it'll sound like. Wait, put that on there. It does that. And this this is what it sounds like without any of the stuff. So yeah. I love layering a bunch of stuff. And the only keys I have down are the E and the G keys right there. I'm just holding those two down and it just replays that over and over within that arpeggiator. And it's the same notes I'm uh, using for that synth as well. Here are just some action things that I use with the pulverizer, so this doesn't really matter. But this is when a new instrument comes in right here, so we will listen to that. And what is playing here is basically the same keys as everything else, but this is a, a bass that is going down with the arpeggiator. And it has some pulverization, a little delay, and that's it for that. So we have this coming in now. And 
watch right here. This is where the envelope for the pulverizer rises up, turns the frequency up. You hear that? We've got the drums kicking in right here. Then some hi-hat action. spooky synth stuff happening there but let's focus right now on this piece before we get into the action the the highlight of the track okay so we have these drums okay so that's just the snare part so it's a big snare has a little bit of reverb and the pulverization has the frequency down a little bit. And then next we have this track in its own little world. So that's just the bass drum and it just has a different EQ on it compared to the snare, which the snare has a whole different EQ. And then the other part we have going on here is this part, the hi-hats, which the hi-hat sounds like this, isolated. It fits so well, it sounds like crap on its own, but once you have it all within the mix, it sounds great. And what I did with this was, uh, let me solo this. Yeah, just a closed hi-hat and an open hi-hat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Has a tiny bit of reverb and the frequency is a bit lower on this one. Just because I didn't want the hi-hats to be so in the person's ears. It's just kind of chilling in its own world in the background. Okay, so we got the drums there that we just went over. We got the hi-hat. Now we just focus on this part right here. Okay, let's look at this. All right, so what I have going on here is a bit of dirt. The frequency is lowered a little bit. And then I have this uh, filter I put into it. It's the VHS filter, how fitting. And basically everything is up. Uh, 100%, 100%, yo. And then got some delay. I mean, you got to have some delay in those 80s synth tracks. That's just a no-brainer. And then we got a new blade. And if you want to know what this uh, synth sounds like without all the bells and whistles I put onto it, let's hear what it sounds like. See, it sounds pretty good, but it's just too crisp and clean for it to sound like a, a 80s lo-fi track. So you put this on, you put that on, and you put the delay on. There you go. All right, yeah, now it's key, now it's champion. And then we have the synth from earlier. It kicks back in halfway through. And then this synth kicks in right here. So basically, up until this point, we've covered all the things that we've done with all these tracks. Now we get to this part. Alright, so the only things that I added here were some pads. And it's called Paranormal Static. So let's hear it by itself. Both of these tracks are the same things. One's left and one is right. And why I pan things left and right and double up some tracks, just to give it a more full stereo sound. You don't want to record everything straight up mono. Okay, so this is what it sounds like by itself. Let's listen to this. So 
also very spooky. Ooh. And it, it gets lost pretty uh, deep within the mix, but it just makes everything sound better. And so after that, we get to this final part here, which ends the track. <laughs> show you the keys I play there just some little extra thing just dramatic drop down and that's basically it one last thing I do want to show you is how this main piece is played <laughs> all right so it's like that and I'm gonna show you how to play it visually with my fingers on the synth. Okay, so first things first, move the octave up a pinch, and you're gonna start on the E key, just like that. And that's basically all it is. E, C, B, G, G, A, So there you go guys now you know how to play at least a little bit of uh, exit 89 it's an easy beginners uh, thing to play if you are trying to play piano you could at least say now that hey I could play that one song from that one band that eh, you may not know it because uh, yeah uh, I know them before they're cool okay <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you like these types of videos about music production and all that kind of stuff, let me know. Until then, see y'all later. I'm DJ Glowing Ice. Have a great day.